if you're in the music making community, if you're a composer or if you write sheet music for whatever reason whatsoever, this video is gonna pique your interest. Because usually in the past, I don't know, like the last few years, we've had sheet music software that has been really good. Usually we have like uh, the Sibelius program or Finale. We have this new company called MuseScore, and MuseScore has been out for a while now, and they've had the same interface. This is a sheet music software that I use personally because I don't compose enough to purchase the very fancy Finale or the Sibelius uh, that's run by the company Avid. But I use MuseScore because if there's like a piece of sheet music or an exercise that I wanna use for my students, I just go to MuseScore, I just make a quick exercise and that's it. But then MuseScore 4 came out and I wanna talk about MuseScore 4 because it looks like a really good sheet music software now. Like, it, you know, it's got a facelift, it looks really, really sleek, and today's video, we're gonna just run through, we're gonna dive in to what MuseScore 4 looks like and some of the really awesome features that MuseScore 4 has now. Let's talk about some of the really amazing changes of MuseScore 4 before we actually dive into the software. So right here, I'm on MuseScore.com, this is the official release of, for MuseScore. And what's really great about MuseScore is that it's it's a public domain. It was created by open source. It was created by all sorts of people in the MuseScore community to help enhance the software so that way it can continue to be free. So over here, we're gonna, you know, there's a whole MuseScore 4 video announcement, which I'm gonna link in the description below. So you can take a look at, because, you know, that's gonna dive into some of like the little features of MuseScore 4, but we're actually gonna dive into all the things in MuseScore 4 today. So what's new in MuseScore 4? This is a big deal. The Muse Sounds new orchestral plugin. Why is this a big deal? The new orchestral plugin is a game changer, everyone. And the reason being is we no longer have to pay hundreds of dollars every year just to use a software to have good orchestral plugins. <coughs> Sibius, <coughs> Avid. And it's available now for everyone in the MuseScore community. It's available now for you to download and to try out. So we'll get into that in a moment. But I just wanted to point that out because it is a super important feature that's gonna help out a lot of musicians. For the reason being that like I work with composers, you know, enough to realize that MIDI files are important to really get the actualization of what the composer wants uh, in terms of dynamics, in terms of accents. I mean, everything you can see in the score, but for me personally, it's really helpful to have some kind of realistic recording of what the composer envisions with the piece that I'm gonna perform or record. So there you have it. I think that's gonna be a really, really awesome feature. Um, improved system for publishing the Muse score, a simple switching back between profiles, MS Basic and Muse Sounds. Muse Sounds, again, is the orchestral plugin. We'll get into that. A, going to the next section, an entirely new interface, 400 new icons, customizable colors, uh, a friendlier onboarding process, which is great. And we also have some new engraving uh, overhaul, which, what what is engraving? What is musical engraving? So back in the day when we didn't have this kind of software, let's say, let's give an example for Mozart's day. He would have, you know, he would compose the piece and then he would give it to an engraver so that the engraver could make things really neat. I mean, Mozart already had really nice penmanship um, in terms of like writing his music out, but that would be a, an example of a music engraver where you have the music really, really nicely. Back in the day, it would be pencil and paper, but now the engraving would happen software and these little details really matter of the overall experience of software. And then multiple workflow improvements, I feel like this is just more software things that will help improve the overall experience of MuseScore 4 and a new mixer, which is really great because normally you have audio engineering uh, capabilities with this thing. And I th this just unlocks a whole new potential for anyone who wants to get into composition and who wants to just experiment with what it's like to actually compose music. And then you have instruments, effects, and all sorts of stuff. I think what's also great is that you have like different languages that you can translate to. So it's not just English, so that's a nice plus. I just downloaded MuseCore 4. I haven't taken a look at what all of this is. Let's dive right in. 
Wow, right off the bat, this looks really sleek. And I like the dark mode. I think you have the option of a light mode or a dark mode. I chose the dark mode just now. You have all sorts of different plugins, which is really cool. You have the new retrograde uh, feature, remove courtesy accidentals. No, these are all disabled, I think. Okay, well, either way, let's go to learn. And you have all sorts of different YouTube videos that are in, that is engraved in the software. If you're new to the whole MuseScore community, if you're new to the whole software, well, there's a special learning section on the t on the left side of the software where you can click on the video to learn a little more and actually it goes into great detail probably more so than i can in this video so you know take a look at those videos really will be helpful for you so let's just go into the whole scores i have no scores here and i'm gonna just see what the experience is like in opening a new score so i'm gonna click on new score you have create from template, you have choose instruments. Usually I would do, um, I would do strings or bowed. Uh, so the strings plucked is usually like classical guitar, harp, you know, you get the idea. And then strings bowed, that would be probably my, my cup of tea. So what I would do, I would do like violin or I could even, oh, I can even, I see. So this is new. So I can actually choose the, um, I can actually choose what I want in the new score. So, or what I can do is I can, I can just create from a template. I can do orchestral template, like a classical orchestra, symphony orchestra, string orchestra. That actually makes the process way easier. So I don't have to worry about adding every single track or adding every single instrument. This makes the whole process very easy. But for now, I'm gonna go to violin bowed and I'm gonna click done. So right here we have the main interface. You can tell that this is very, very clean. A lot of it is really familiar from the previous MuseScore software, MuseScore 3, and they had like all sorts of different software updates with MuseScore 3, but the MuseScore 4 overhaul, this is really a nice, sleek, clean interface, and everything is really easy to access and right over here, the, the font looks excellent. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say violin exercises and then composer arranger. I can just go ahead, Eric Rugala. And um, oh, that's really cool. I can actually do like a subtitle, but I'm gonna delete that just for the time being. And Let's take a look at some of the other clefs here. Well, because we're in violin, we're gonna just do treble clef. And we have key signatures. I can just click on a specific measure and just go ahead and do A major. Or I just, and on Mac, I'll do Command Z to delete that, just to undo the process. I could do D major, B minor. Everything very sleek. Time signature is very nice. Um, yeah, something that I'm noticing already that the spacing of each system of each, uh, of the stack of the staves are like really nice. I remember in MuseScore 3 that when I'm opening a new document, I had like a bunch of lines, uh, when opening like a new document and everything was really, really cramped. This seems a little bit more spaced out just organically from the very start. Um, good job to all the people who have been, been working on this for a long time. I know it's no easy feat, but let's let's continue moving forward. We also have the accidentals, the dynamics, articulations, the text. And this is also important if you want something very specific in your music. You can, let's say, I'm going to highlight uh, staff and I'm going to say maybe my tempo marking is going to be Allegro. Good. So that could be, oh, and I could even move it. That's really convenient. And repeats, you have all sorts of DSL Coda, DSL Fine. That's really, really fine. Layout. <clears throat> oh, this is new. I can enter the text frame. Uh, let's see if I can enter the text frame. Ah, 
I see. So this could be for more for like a coral stuff, but I'm actually gonna, or let's see if I can actually do the whole text. Oh, I see, I see what it does. Okay, so this is more for like more vocal, I think. So anyways, now let's actually go to the writing of the music. So I'm gonna zoom in here and just for the sake of the argument i'm gonna actually change it to a major and i over over here on the top left corner i have all sorts of different goodies on what kind of notes i want to have on the music so let's say i have let's just do 16th notes actually let me go back And over here, what's great about MuseCore, of course, is I get to use my keyboard to compose music, which is nice. So I'm gonna be a, ooh. Oh, that's interesting. So do you hear that already? The, the, uh, the sounds are really much more realistic than MuseCore 3, really nice. So. One great thing I love about MuseScore is that I can just copy and paste. So I'm actually going to, I'm not going to, hold on, how do I do this? This is actually a learning experience for me. Okay, good. So I'm actually going to maybe, I'm going to do a shift and, and right arrow. I'm going to do command C and do the same thing for this section here. Actually, I'm going to delete Allegro. And let's see how this sounds like. I'm gonna do maybe, I, on the top right corner, I see I have a metronome. So what I will do is I'm gonna try maybe playing this. Okay, it's decent. Let me, let's get a little bit more, more sound just to see what it sounds like. Great, that's that's one idea. So how about, I have an idea. I wanna hear what it sounds like with the staccato marking. So I'm gonna do articulations. No, that's accidentals. Eric, you can read. Let's see, let's try to hear the difference with what the software does. So I'm gonna actually go back all the way to the beginning and here we go. Now keep in mind that you also have different options for like violin section or uh, for this particular exercise, I just did violin. So it may sound a little different with the violin section. As a matter of fact, let's try that. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do a new score <clears throat> and I'm gonna go over to strings, bowed, strings, section, done. Okay. so. For this, I'm gonna do the same parameters over here. I'm gonna, oh, I can just copy and paste from the previous document. Okay, that's nice. And then I'll do here. Let's give this a try. Let's hear how it sounds. Really different, really, really different. So let's try with the staccato now, or spiccato, I should say articulation let's do all that see let's try to hear what the difference is so i would say that the section sounds a little better than the actual violin solo itself but you get the idea you have different options and you can the sky's the limit now with the realistic sounds that you get from muse score 4. so this is really exciting for me because you have an amazing, amazing tool for composing music for free. And even though it may have its downfalls, it may not be completely perfect. Like thing with Sibelius is that you can transfer stuff from Pro Tools into Sibelius and vice versa. If you're like in the in the music music industry, you know you're around that software all the time, and you're in music studios and you're composing for film. That's a different story. That's a different conversation we're having. I'm talking about. Uh, the composer at a home who's an indie artist or a violinist or a musician who's trying to just create something really quickly for their students or someone who is interested in composition and trying to sell their music eventually. This is a great tool. Music, music score four, not a bad tool for anyone who's really wanting to get into composition. 
Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in more violin tutorials or any music related content, check out some of my videos on this channel. Thanks so much.